Hello, everyone, and welcome to Next Big Future. Um, this video is really going to be about a concept I have for a really, really big future. Um, so I am a futurist. I've written Next Big Future, the website, for almost 20 years, written over 30,000 articles, and many of them are highly, highly researched. Like I dig into the research papers, look at all the stuff. I've lectured four times at Singularity University. Um, gave talks, annual talks on updates on what was happening in nanotechnology. And I covered nanotechnology and many other things, space, all, all kinds of technology. And, you know, personally met and spoken with Ray Kurzweil, an investor in Tesla and SpaceX. So what I'm going to present to you may seem fantastical, but it is based on uh, serious research and, and thought by, you know, someone who's been in some ways a professional futurist for, for 20 years. So let me get into that. So I'm talking about a Tesla and SpaceX unlimited future where they develop the entire solar system. So we're talking big, okay? And you have some pictures here of, of, the, of the Starship, the Tesla bot, and then uh, various Dyson spheres and rings and structures, which would be capturing all the radiation from the sun. Okay, so technological sing singularity concept um, mainly developed by um, Ray Kurzweil, and it's about accelerating change, some point at which the, the future changes, accelerating change usually based upon having AI, um, artificial general intelligence, not just artificial intelligence, where it uh, gets to a billion times the collective uh, uh, computing intelligence of uh, humanity, the artificial um, intelligence takes over and drives um, accelerating improvement. Uh, but this is not um, particularly defined. It's just, you know, it's, it's a graph and, and things accelerate. And the assumption is that um, something vastly more intelligent will solve problems faster, better, execute better. And it's a self-improving technology. The AI can work on improving the computers and the other base technology so they can keep leveling up, getting better and better and better. And this creates an intelligent explosion and an emergence of true super intelligence. So that's the, the theory, but it doesn't, you know, there's various assumptions around the, the mechanisms of which the feedback loops that occur to continue to go faster and faster. But we have been kind of staircasing ourselves up in terms of like making a fab, making better fabs, making faster computers, kind of, leveling up our own technology in kind of a, a loop like that. And then also there's part of the technological singularity thesis is that the, the prediction horizon, when the, the major event occurs and it's tough to predict, and there's a transition and then beyond is infinite progress. So that's the rough kind of outline of technological singularity. Far more details given in, in several books, um, I think there's near by Ray Kurzweil, like, album pages like that and he gives constant talks on it may or youtube other people have written about um, concepts around technological singularity so that's the background of that so i'm proposing is a tesla spacex singularity where a certain event occurs and tesla and spacex will have this unlimited growth okay so gigafactories are being built now and they're being more and more integrated with their supply chain you know, if you listen to the talks, um, annual meetings, quarterly reports, where Elon Musk is talking, he's talking about, and also his team, talking about getting raw materials in the one end of a gigafactory and then producing the batteries, producing the parts of the other end. You know, the newest factory in Austin and Texas, sorry, Austin, Berlin, um, have on the top floor um, the inputs for the batteries the cells are made and then they drop down to the next floor where they're integrated into the cars or into battery packs and then they integrate cars so each thing drops down into the right spot perfectly engineered to take in the raw materials build them out they can build their own batteries the 4680 batteries just uh, again for people who are not as familiar with the what tesla is doing so raw materials gathered and and then you can also have a machine that build the machine to build the machine where raw materials are gathered and then gigafactories are produced. 
about 700 robots, about the, each about the size of a, of a car, um, other size ma uh, machines for making batteries, certain other larger components for, um, you know, handling the chemicals and doing certain things, welding and mold, certain of those things can be bigger. The gigapress is about uh, 400 to 500 tons, and those they create new alloys and they form the body of the vehicle. So, but the masses of those things are in that range of this some limited number, a thousand, two thousand, or less. And you can also reduce that. The, the gigapress, the 400 ton machine that forms the, the front and rear castings, those replace like uh, several hundred parts and they replace 300 uh, assembly welding robots. So, a thousand fewer welds or some such thing. The so SpaceX Starship also being mass produced. They're mass producing, they're creating a Raptor engine, Raptor being the rocket engine, and they're making a thousand of those per year. Previously, they're making 300, 400 Merlin engines. Now they have a factory that's going to produce 1,000 of the new Raptor engines. And then nine Raptor engines go into the upper stage Starship, and then 40 roughly go into the bottom booster stage. And the boosters um, fly up and return every a few minutes. So a booster in theory could launch 20 starships to orbit. One single booster can launch 20 starships to orbit flying roughly once an hour. So that's some of what's getting up to speed what's been happening with the SpaceX and Tesla. Not everyone pays close attention to someone like me, a share owner of, of Tesla might uh, be highly focused on every announcement that occurs every ad quarterly report, et cetera, and all the videos that go on about it. But there's many people covering these in detail, the drones fly over, all this stuff is happening, and then there's projections of how this is going to develop. So factories that build the factories can be transported. Elon talked about sending a thousand starships to make a Mars city, uh, several flights, like I think 20, every flight of two years, 20 major fleets of a thousand starships flying. On the low end, you're talking about 100 tons per starship. There's uh, improvements in engines. Other improvements to the starship maybe get to 200 tons. Um, a scale of, of two, we're talking about these kind of numbers, 1,000 starships, 2,000 starships, are relatively irrelevant. Okay, but so 1,000 starships, 100 tons, 100,000 tons. So we're basically talking about a D-Day invasion uh, to Mars every two years, right? But the entire Gigafactory, with 700 robots each weighing two tons, you know, 1,400 tons. Um, then we're talking about 20 Starship launches to for all the machines in a gigafactory. And then add in supply chain, you know, where the mining machines, excavating machines, digging, tunneling, have the boring company, another Elon Musk company, digging stuff, getting into mining, lithium mining, something like that. And again, integrating everything in the supply chain. Then, you know, you could, Transport it. Seems like a hundred starships max, but if they're single, looking to send a thousand starships, you can send, you know, definitely be able to send the whole thing. And whether you send one complete gigafactory in supply chain, or whether you supply 10 in your thousand launches, the point you can do it once. And then you have a factory that builds a factory transported to Mars. A gigafactory producing gigafactories that make solar panels, uh, more Raptor engines, more, more starships more um, Tesla bots, more uh, cyber trucks, et cetera, okay? Factories that can build, factories that build everything else. And then you have something that can self-replicate. Basically you have one, you have two, you have four, you have eight, et cetera. And this is not a uh, only Brian concept. There've been many NASA and other studies done over the years. First one being 1981, NASA study, Self-ripping factory done by Robert Freitas. Robert Freitas actually um, I consider a friend um, who I've, I've spoken with when I went to lecture at Singularity University. He was leading the nanotechnology track with Ralph Merkel. So you know, I've had had you know lunches and, and dinners, whatever with Robert. Freitas. Not not frequently, but you know, it has occurred. I've, I've spoken to him personally. Um, anyway, so then NASA aims the Jap Japanese studies you know, some of the links here, and then the follow-up studies in 2004. Some of the later studies we're looking at making it lighter, um, again, under the assumption that you can't launch that much. Easier to, to do it, you know, when you're doing it with 100,000 tons versus 1,000 tons. Um, 
the rare face study breaks down the kind of robot he's just meticulous as, as heck and you know looks at the power estimates weights etc like that and he was looking about the 100 you know 80 to 150 tons to do this thing but we're talking about gigafactory here we don't have to go light because we've got like a thousand starships so they talk about doing it you now how can we do it with 100 200 tons a few launches of apollo blah 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 we're not you know, worried about that because we have the limitation, one of the limitations, once we get uh, mass productions of starships. So this goes fully exponential. You know, one builds two, builds four, builds eight, et cetera, et cetera. 10 doublings, you're a thousand, 20 doublings, you're a million. So this is doubling levels. Okay, double a significant difference, counting doubles, doubling times. It, you know, our whole civilization, we tend to be doubling every 10 to 60 years between, you know, for doubling and doing that for like hundreds of years. Okay, that's a whole civilization. I'm gonna do a separate video where I'm gonna lay out tracking a civilization through doubling from the dawn of man to galactic beyond civilization. Okay, you can just track it out, you know, 300 steps or less and you cover your entire universe, okay? Portability improvement, like I said, you know, there were very studies that looked at making it lighter. We can do that if we need to, maybe we wanna make the gigapress a bit lighter. It's an optimization thing. You know, if we have, can take 100,000 tons, they can 200,000 tons, take a million tons, you know, several series of launches, the point is to get it there and you start replicating. And how long does it take to make other ones? It takes two years to make a new gigafactory with regulation. One year, something without regulation. And you'll note that um, Elon Musk has basically been simplifying civilization in terms of like, you have solar and batteries and that can provide all your power. You know, yes, you can do nuclear, you can do this, you can do wind, blah, blah, blah. But if I'm on Mars, I can do solar and batteries and that works. And if I have the factory that builds those two things and the supply chain, then I can scale to as much power as I need. I can, you know, take the materials, pump out, make fields and fields, square miles, thousand square miles of, of you know, 10,000 square miles of, of solar panels. And even though, oh, it's only, half, one third of the fish and become more distant, you know, I'm on Mars, I make three times more and I'm at the same power as I'm on Earth. Okay, so just with more, any inefficiencies just drop away. Okay, he's working on self-driving cars, self-driving, you can make self-driving construction machines, more automated factories, making the, starting to make the new Tesla bots, human robots, which could also help do the machines, need fewer people to do the mining, the factory work. Um, one thing, you know, in terms of like how I look at the Tesla bot is it's all cargo. If you have energy from solar power, you can power your Tesla bot and whatever maintenance there is. A human needs to have supplies, water, food, et cetera. So then that means taking it there and then replic reproducing agriculture. Okay. Just, you can do it with greenhouses and other things. It can be done, but the Tesla bots scale up even better if they can, you know, replace the labor of humans in, you know, some ratio factor, even if it's like not to take 20 Tesla bots to replace one human, that can still work out better uh, in terms of a mass weight size, you know, weight and scaling, et cetera. And they can do boring tunnels and, and other things to do mining, habitat construction, digging things up. So we have the normal future of doubling. And so it goes to detail and farther amount, but you can start from World War II. We've had 15 times, World War II had 15 times less steel and oil. And now we've had, because that's 15 just short 16, so that's four doublings. One, two, four, you know, two, four, eight, 16, four doublings, 16. Okay, since World War II. So roughly um, closing in on, uh, you know, well, 82 years or whatever. Okay. And then doubling the economy. Okay. So, Acceleration is extra doubling, technology acceleration, okay? If you have one extra doubling, you know, what does that mean? We get to 440 tr trillion per thing power GDP with 50K per person versus, you know, roughly 110 trillion GDP now, 100, 100 trillion GDP now with 16K per person on average. Again, most people, the average world human is still, you know, four times poorer than some of the U.S., and then do extra doubling by 2070, something like that, you can just get this extra growth and here's roughly what that means. Um, 
So 6% per year GB growth instead of 3% per year for 25 years gets you uh, 4X instead of 2X, right? 3% per year for 25 years is, is, is a double. 6% is, uh, is four times. So you double every like 13 years. China had in the range of 15% per year growth for a decade. Okay, that's how they got to two doubling in 10 years. Okay, so it has been done for, you know, roughly a fifth of the, of the world population. And then, you know, here's some example of, of mining excavation machines, you know, you can do them at scale, you have a small tractor in the picture, and then, you know, larger machines, but the, the beam, the girder and stuff, you can, you know, break it apart and then reassemble it on the other end. So the speed of the factory repl uh, replication, I talked about, you know, you can only build one every year or two, build it a year in China, two years in Germany with bureaucracy, et cetera. No regulatory delays on Mars and, you know, or the moon, but you need the entire supply chain. But I said you can do it, get the mining machine, they're just machines, you can build them, transport them, you can make the, the factory to build them over there. Currently about eight hours to build a Tesla car, start the production line to the end. Um, add some time if you're also going to be doing the raw material fabrication of the batteries there like that. Um, and then you can assemble other robots as well, uh, which are similar mass to a car. And then some, most of them are that size because they need to work with the car. So they're roughly that size. They can make some bigger, some smaller. All transportable if you can send them off 200 tons at a time in a, in a Starship. And, you know, let's talk about making a bigger Starship if needed. A Starship 2.0, a super heavy booster, which would be able to launch perhaps a thousand tons. So if you have some really big components, you can make a bigger starship to launch it. So one billion tons steel now, that's roughly what we do for the world. You know, we also have details about how much cement and stuff you need. You, you don't want to transport cement because that's super easy to, to make on Mars and on the moon. Um, you have the water, the water ice on Mars. Anyway, so steel, you know, the the materials are there. You just again to mine it, you know. Even if it's more difficult, as long as you can get it there, then you have to, you know, have to move it from Earth. And the, Mars is an entire planet, so there's a lot of stuff there in terms of like metals and materials and that kind of stuff. So if we just ballpark 100,000 tons for all machines and mines instead of a complete gigafactory with mines, then 10,000 gigafactories complete, you know, again, a display with supply chain per billion tons. Um, one that could produce like 1 million starships per year. We're right now looking to scale to mass produce 100 starships per year. That's the current goal for SpaceX. To want to get in like a, in like a year or two. And they're making demos, you know, the prototypes of these things, you know, one every month or two. So getting to two a week, but 100 per year is if it's doable. And then if you have thousands of gigafactories producing a million starships per year, would, would then become possible? And then the mass would be roughly comparable to our civilization. And then a Tesla bot was four times less than a car, looking at making maybe 2 million cars, electric cars per year out of each gigafactory. So then if a gigabot, a Tesla bot is four times less, then if you're making the, the parts and the batteries, I can make 80 million Tesla bots from the same size factory versus 2 million cars. And then there's work that Tesla and SpaceX are, are doing to improve the efficiency, but we can just you know, increased efficiency, you know, 10 times faster, again, relatively irrelevant to the large numbers that I'm talking about, but it will be there. And uh, I've gone, th you know, gone through in detail the entire human history of doubling times. Um, and, you know, I have a separate video discussing that entire aspect of civilization. Um, so we have roughly factor 10 improvements, factor 10, pretty close to three doublings, you know, two, four, eight, you know, to get to 10. Um, and then easier to go from 10 doublings to get to 1,000, easier factoring. And then going for how many doublings we've had since the beginning of civilization. So 26 doublings from the dawn of man, where you have like a small, the first small cluster of, of proto humans, um, you know, um, Homo erectus, whatever, and that becoming what we are today, 8 billion people. And then how to get to a fully developed solar system and then a fully developed galaxy. But I'm just, looking at the Tesla SpaceX thing to get to a pretty fully developed solar system. I'll go over that in a bit of detail now with the next 10-ish uh, slides. And the scale human colonization with bots, increase starship production, bring more people, build up more cities, 
But again, if I have self-replicating factory and build more stuff I need, I can send other specialized factories if I need to build, you know, more building materials or whatever like that. But once I start be able to move the supply chain to Mars, then I can start massively consuming the materials there to, to build it out. It might also be sent some people, say 10,000 humans per 40 million bots, 10 million humans for 10 billion bots. 10 billion bots, roughly the bot population then exceeds the human entire you know, Earth population. You have 100 million, 100 Mars cities, 100,000 humans, 100 million bots each to get to that 10, 10 billion bots, 10, 10 million human uh, scenario. And then you can look at you know, building out from Mars with that uh, capability to go other places in the solar system and then create capturing the entire radiation of the, of the, of the solar system using the Dyson's. Uh, there's other uh, formats for the Dyson sphere. The Dyson sphere is actually, uh, because of the gravitational stresses, is, uh, you need some un unobtainium material to make it. So you're looking better at these Dyson bubbles and Dyson swarms, basically, if you're capturing solar energy around the, the sun. Uh, so industrial solar system, 26 doublings for uh, not a Dyson sphere, but you know, just a fairly complete solar system uh, civilization. If you're doing a doubling at a current rate of 25 years uh, to a double, that's the current rate of human civilization for the last, uh, say, 500 years. Then you're looking at 650 years to get to that point. But if you double every five years, which China did for a while, you're looking at 140 years. If you double every two years, which is the pace that Tesla's at without further improvement, then you're looking at 52 years, as long as they can <clears throat> don't hit the limitations. And I'm talking about not hitting limitations. So 52 years instead of 650 years, you can get two year doubling instead of 25. And the end of which point you have like a million complete factories, 100 million starships per year, 10 trillion bots per year, 1000 terawatts or more solar power per year. And then I can go into these sort of other components as well, but that's kind of like the high uh, highlights of what you can be building. And then you probably 1% solar system uh, industrialized because it takes longer to get out to the, to the distant Oort cloud um, and other areas of the solar system. It's a time thing, unless we develop better engines and stuff, which I'm not assuming that we do, although I expect that would happen. There's no technological reason that we can't. Um, I can go into that. I've gone over my, my website, you know, hundreds of articles on that. So here we're looking at the asteroid belt, which is just beyond Mars and then inside of Jupiter. And then we have the Trojan, the Greeks, some other distribution of the asteroid belt. And then there's two other um, asteroid formations. There's a Kuiper belt um, out around um, <clears throat> Neptune and, and Pluto and beyond. And then there's the Oort cloud, which surrounds us far more distant than, um, than uh, Pluto. Asteroid belt has one to two million asteroids larger than one kilometer. There's a little distribution of the size, the black dots were direct observation and counts. Um, you can see here that the boat at the hundred kilometer size, roughly about a hundred of those objects, hundred diameter, hundred kilometer, 60 mile diameter, of which we've roughly can count and estimate about 70,000 such uh, objects, hundred kilometer size. So there's far more objects in the corporate belt, the asteroid belt. Asteroid belt is about 3% of the mass of the moon. Moon is about 1% of the mass of the Earth. Corporate belt is about 1% of the mass of the Earth, which is 30 times the asteroid belt. The Oort comet cloud, 10 to 100 times the mass of the Earth, which is about 30,000 to 300,000 times the mass of the asteroid belt. So that's what you'd be doing with your, you know, millions and you know, billions of, of starships is going to the asteroids, colonizing, developing all that, mining it, doing materials, building things, going out to the corporate belt, going out to the Oort comet cloud and, and building stuff out there. Okay, that's, you know, getting really big. So how many times is 20 doublings? <clears throat> so Mars full of ecofactories as a um, toehold 
to full solar system industrialization using Tesla bots, machines, human, and human workers, and that self-replicating gigafactory. Thousand Star Ships, Lumpkin Gigafactory, and supply chain, make more solar power, make more batteries, make more bots, make more money, more, 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 make other gigafactories. And so if you have one year replication, you know, no <clears throat> regulatory delays, then you have a thousand gigafactories in 10 years and a million replicating gigafactories in 20 years. And you all would fit on, on Mars. So this would be the Tesla SpaceX technological singularity. Accelerating change, you have 20 extra doublings by 2100. So instead of having the three that we expect based on doubling every 25 years, another 75 years, you get three more. And we'll get 20 extra doublings. So basically nearly civilization would be, you know, 100,000 times more than what, what we are currently on trajectory for. So it'd be a production explosion and the start of an infinite progression scale. So the major starting point is, again, that gigafactory with supply chain transport and built on Mars or the moon. And gigafactory that can rebuild itself and its entire supply chain. That, that's the key kickoff point for this development. So self-replicating gigafactory is the technological singularity. And it's a detailed singularity. I can tell you exactly how many we're gonna make, <clears throat> how you can make, what the production is, what the material components are, and then what are the specific technological milestones that can be achieved. There is some AI involved, AI for self-driving machines, AI for self-driving mining equipment, AI for, for Tesla bots, so there's AI involved, but it's a production singularity. And where we're basically saying we're gonna use this and the, the driving force is, is that we're gonna overproduce and, and make more things to develop the entire solar system. That is the Tesla, SpaceX, develop the entire solar system uh, outline. So thank you for your time. I uh, hope you look at uh, my other videos um, and um, you can like and subscribe to me on YouTube, support me on Patreon, the Next Big Future, and my website, nextbigfuture.com. So um, thanks for your time. Talk to you next time.